I'm just wondering when George is gonna... Maybe not George. Mm-hmm. Shh! Their powder brush blo- Ugh. I feel like I'm a princess in like my castle right now looking down on my people because of all the big windows and I just wanna like, hello, how are ya? Good to see you. <sighs> Brittany. This is my real Valentine. Hmm? Oh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. I'm sure many people think that's disgusting. Don't smash the light. No. James. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and today we are doing an all drugstore, Valentine's Day appropriate, natural light makeup tutorial. So if you are new to my channel and you haven't seen these videos before, every so often I like to film videos in natural light. So what I mean by that is I'm sitting in front of three large windows, only using daylight. I do not have a single studio light out. So the reason I do that is because studio lighting is wonderful. I love being able to control the light so you can see every detail of the makeup, but it definitely softens everything and makes you look pretty airbrushed. So sometimes when you do your makeup in studio lighting, if you step outside, it looks not quite as good as it looks in studio lighting, which is why many people on YouTube look flawless. I mean, a lot of people on YouTube are flawless as well, but I think the studio lighting really does help the situation. So I like to show you guys how it is in natural light. I have flaws and you are gonna see them all in this video. So with that said, I am right in front of a window and I live off of a busy street, so there are gonna be some car noises, but I hope the fact that you're seeing the makeup in natural light for what it's worth will help offset that. And like I said, this is all drugstore where you'll probably be at some time this week either picking up Valentine's or chocolate for yourself or a prescription or whatever you need at the drugstore. I feel like I'm at the drugstore every other day. So if you do need any of these products, you can pick them up, super easy to get. And I'm not using anything like ColourPop or BH or anything like that that you need from Ulta. So with all that said, if you are interested in seeing how I got this look right here, go ahead and keep watching. All right, so now that you are closer to my face than you probably wanna be, I wanted to make sure to show you everything up close in natural light so you could see my imperfections. Like I said in the beginning, studio light really does kind of make you look airbrushed and perfect. And you can see I have some flaws. I have redness here. I have little red dots on my forehead and on my nose that are permanent. I can't make them go away. And I have some larger pores in this area. I don't really worry about pore filling because I don't like that texture on my face typically. So today I'm gonna go in with the NYX High Glass Face Primer in Moonbeam. You can really see in daylight how much of a glow this gives the skin. I only grabbed a tiny bit of product, but when I tested this in my studio lighting, I felt like on camera you couldn't see the glow at all, but when I do this in natural light, you can actually see it. If you wanted more of a matte primer, the e.l.f. Putty Primer is really nice. They also have like a hydrating version. I just haven't seen it at the store yet, but I will grab that. But I like more of a dewy finish, but if you liked matte, check out that e.l.f. Primer. So now let's go ahead and go in with foundation. I've been using this a lot lately. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Dewy. I have Soft Beige. Be careful when you go in with a product like this. It's very easy to overdo it. So I really just try to focus on the areas that need to be covered and I start on the center of my face and I kind of work it out from there. Again, if you wanted more of a matte foundation, since this one is dewy, which I think looks a little more natural, they do have the original version, which is matte, but that one does kind of smell like paint and this one doesn't. They really kind of listened to their audience and took that scent out of this. So. I like the smell and the finish of this one a lot better, but you do whatever works for you. I'm gonna use my Sigma F80 to blend this out. Talked about this in a recent video. I get in the habit of using something and then I forget about my other products. So I've been using a sponge a lot lately and I will tap over this with a sponge and just make sure when you're doing this to go right into the ears and down the neck as well because you want everything to look seamless. You don't wanna forget about those areas and really kind of work it into the hairline as well so there's no line of like your natural skin and the foundation but Anyway, I go through phases of only using one kind of tool. I was using the Blendiful for a while there and I totally forgot how much I love this brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and just really kinda 
spread the product out with the brush and then I'll tap over it with my sponge. Okay, so that is just one very light layer of the foundation all over the face. As you can see, there's a little bit of a difference between my under eyes and the foundation. That's because I don't bring my foundation up under my eyes. If you are struggling with really cakey looking concealer, maybe try not bringing your foundation up so high because it really kind of cakes up quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply some concealer now. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I really like this stuff so much. And I'm not gonna go in heavy with this either. You can still see imperfections on my skin. You could still see a little bit of redness. You could see my freckles poking through. I like that. I think it just looks a lot more natural, but if you did like more full coverage, feel free to do whatever works for you. I'm just gonna add this right here and right there where I have some discoloration. And then when I blend it out, I'll use whatever is left on my sponge to cover my eyelid since I do have some pigmentation there as well. I think we get really caught up in watching people do things on camera and on camera and studio lighting, you can really kind of cake on the product and it really honestly looks fantastic. That's why stage makeup and you know, makeup when celebrities wear it is a lot heavier because they're on TV and on camera and that looks so pretty on stage, on camera and all that stuff. But in person, it just looks so super heavy. So try not to be thrown off by when you see people on YouTube really like do a full triangle and fill it in and then blend that out. Trust me when I say if you saw that in person, you would think that person had what looked like a mask on because it looks heavy. And then keeping that in mind as well, if you are doing something and you know you're gonna be on camera, go ahead and apply it a little heavier. I know when my period is coming because these two same little pimples start to surface and I literally wanna rip them off my face. All right, so that is the foundation and the concealer looking nice and natural. I'm gonna go ahead and let that hang out for a while and kind of settle in while I work on my brows. This is the Milani Precision Brow and I have the shade Medium Brown. I did just dye my eyebrows, so I don't need to go in super heavy here. I'm mainly just gonna work on the arch and make sure that looks a little more full. I have the most sparseness, sparseness? hopefully that's a word, right here in this area. So that's all I'm really gonna focus in on. I want these to look really soft. We're going for a very soft look in general here, so having a harsh brow is not gonna do me any favors. I feel like brows are one of those things too that can start to look really heavy really quickly, so try to hold just like your brushes at the end but obviously you don't want to be too like flippy floppy so you make a mistake and like draw a brow down your eyelid but a light hand and little short you know flicking motions work best do you guys have that one good brow and that one brow who does not want to behave because I definitely do. This is my good brow, and this is my brow that never wants to behave. All right, and then to set those brows up, I finally got my hands on the Milani Clear Brow Gel. Super excited about this stuff. I hope it works as well as my Benefit 24-hour brow set because nothing keeps my brows in place quite like that. And I heard that this is pretty dang good. Okay, so now that the foundation has had a chance to kind of settle in, I'm gonna go in and bronze. I'm using my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It in 01 and my Milani Sunkissed Bronzer in 02, and I'm just mixing them together using my favorite Japanese brush. This is the 716, and I'm literally just doing this. And I wanna share with you guys how I bronze. So I only go in with a little product at a time, so you're gonna see me dip into my bronzer quite often, but what I do is, again, I hold at the end of the brush ferrule, so I'm not going in too heavy. You have a lot of control when you're holding a brush up here, like where you hold a pencil, so it's not all wiggly. When you do that, you apply a lot of product a lot of the times, and you don't wanna do that with bronzer. You don't want it to look you know, super heavy, and then you have to blend really hard, so start lightly and then build up, and I do that by holding back, and then just doing small little circular motions. And I don't bring it down past where my natural contour is because I want to lift my face. I think that's the key. You can see how I have just a little bit of warmth to my face, but it's not super overpowering. I think that's the key to bronzing. I'll do the same thing on the forehead 
and just make sure you work it right into the hairline again so there's no line of like foundation and then you know bronzer because that's not a cute look and yes your hair will get all frizzy in this area but that's okay we'll fix that later in that same turn I want to take my bronzer and just work it down the neck lightly I don't need to like chisel out my jawline or anything like that but if you did you could totally do that I just want everything to look seamless which is why I go in and just really really lightly dust it along the neck because otherwise it would look like I had a really pale neck and then more of a you know warm face so it just ties it in together and I'll do the same thing along the bridge of the nose so again I'm not trying to carve anything out here so I'm really gonna work the product off on the back of my hand before I go in and do this and I'm just gonna kind of follow the natural contour right here because that makes my eyes look bigger and then I'm also gonna take that down the nose right here just so everything looks seamless if you did feel like you needed to contour your nose which I don't think most people do and it's a very very hard thing to contour a nose and make it look natural I just take this along the sides so everything looks even it's all about symmetry and if you do bronze one area I feel like you do need to bronze the rest so it looks even all right and as for blush I'm gonna grab my Milani tea rose blush Milani makes some of the best blush formulas ever. Love the powder blush. I'm going to start saying brush. I do that every single time. I like cannot control my mouth. And I love their cream blushes as well that they just came out with. So I'm grabbing my Japanesque 722. And I'm going to apply this a little bit farther back on the cheeks I have redness here like you guys saw in the beginning of the video and I don't want to emphasize that it is gonna come out through the day so I'm gonna keep this a little bit farther back and I just apply it basically right over the bronzer and just a touch farther back to one lift the face and two, not emphasize that redness and I do want more of a pinky rosy you know not like a heavy blush application and we will blend that out but I want a little more blush today because it's gonna play up the soft pinks on the eyes all right blush is done so let's go in and highlight today I'm grabbing my Maybelline master chrome it has been quite a while this is the color 250 they have a number of colors out there this is my favorite I'm gonna grab my Anastasia a23 careful with this and all highlights in general because they are pigmented and again highlight is one of those things that you know very very easy to go overboard and doesn't look quite so natural in real life so I'm just looking in the daylight where the Sun is reflecting even though there's no Sun it's completely gray out but where the light is kind of reflecting off my face and I'm just emphasizing that lightly highlight light concealer is one of those things that I feel like people just follow what other people do but if you really kind of study your face shape and like I said see where it naturally reflects light it will look so much more flattering and then I grab my handy dandy sponge and I just press that right into the skin all right so that is the base completely done looking very natural but very pretty so I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of spritzes of the NYX bear with me prime set refresh spray I always do this after I apply any powder so my powder bronzer blush and highlight again it just helps everything kind of look like one with the skin so I'm just gonna do a couple of spritzes here and then fan myself off all right let's move on to these eyes so today I'm going in with my Milani eyeshadow primer this is a really nice primer I think it might be my favorite primer on the market from high-end to drugstore it's just really really nice and it doesn't like a lot of them apply too much color to the lid this even though it does have a little bit of like a tan ish color it goes away as you start to blend it and I feel like this really does make the shadows blend onto the eyes a lot easier and it sets down really quick so check this out super affordable and awesome my left eye is starting to water a little bit which is just fantastic especially when I'm about to go in and do my eyes and irritate them but we'll get past it so today I was at CVS making sure all these products were available and I ran across this wet and wild palette I'm sure I've had this in the past it's the sweet as candy palette and I just thought this was the absolute perfect palette 
for a Valentine's Day look. So I'm really just going to apply the eyelid shade all over and then we'll go in with this shade, maybe a little bit of that as well under the eye. And then I'm thinking I might grab a little bit. People just love to honk in Chicago. So if you hear that, you know, it's Chicago, but I might take a touch of this on the inner corner and maybe even on the center of the lid. We're just going to keep this really soft. So starting out with that eyelid shade on just a flat brush, this is a MAC 239. I'm going to start at the base of the lash line where we want most of the color and then just work my way up. so pretty it like matches my nail color perfectly which is exactly what I was looking for let me tell you guys it is a challenge to do this because I am sitting on my couch on my knees which is so uncomfortable both of my feet are pretty much asleep right now and I don't have like a table in front of me because I have a big couch and there's just you know pillows in the way so this is quite a challenge. I'm going to have to figure out a different setup. That is such a pretty color. I love it. I'm just going to grab a Smith 230 to blend the edges a little. And I talked about this before. Make sure when you're blending to hold your brush out like this. If you blend like this, you're likely going to blend away most of the shadow on the lid as well. And we don't want to do that. Literally takes like two seconds to blend. I forgot how much I liked wet and wild shadows. I'm just gonna build up a little more of that color on the lid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the transition color down here and I'm gonna work that under the eye. This is just a ColourPop pencil brush. I'm not gonna smoke it out too much, but just a little bit. All right, and then with that same Smith brush, I'm just gonna go in with the Milani bronzer. If you wanted to go in with that transition color in the palette, you could. It's just a little bit too dark for me, and I love bringing my like blush and bronzer into my like crease area. So I'm just gonna add that right into the crease. And hopefully at this point, your eyes are not watering like mine. I need to pop an allergy pill. And I am just gonna kinda touch that right on the edge as well. I'm gonna grab a little of that transition color actually for the outer corner. It's not gonna grab much product right there where my eye is starting to water, but you guys get the deal. So see how that little bit of bronzer just makes all the difference in kind of sinking the eye back. If you like this look, you could totally leave it like that. I just like the little bit of depth that it brings to the eyes. And once we have our mascara on, it's gonna look perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little more of that transition color from the Wet n Wild palette to the lower lash line as well. All right, so we've definitely got some watery outer corners right here so you could see that it's not really holding the product there but I just have to deal with that because I have watery eyes today but I am going to take the brow bone color in the palette on a Kat Von D number 40 brush I really like this for cleaning up the outer corner don't go in with too much product just a touch really make sure to kind of tap it off and then if you just kind of do this it really sharpens that edge and I think looks so super pretty. And if you didn't have watery outer corners like I do, it would look even better. Ooh, we're really, really watery right there. I'm gonna show you how I fix that though. I'm just gonna take a little concealer and then I'm gonna grab a concealer brush and I'm just gonna pat right in that area. Just really kind of make sure you get it up and into the corner. I think we all kind of struggle with watery eyes, especially in the winter. And I will go ahead and apply some more of the transition color from the Wet n Wild palette. All right, I'm happy with that. Super, super soft, beautiful. Like I said, outer corners are watering, so we're just gonna have to deal with that. But I am gonna go in and apply some lashes. These are my Kiss Ever Easy Lash Trios. 
really like these they're super comfortable and they last all night long and are not heavy at all so you won't be irritated and then I'm gonna go in with some Maybelline Snapscara my old one has finally dried out so it's time to bust open a new one I will go in with a black liner and a nude liner as well black on the upper waterline obviously nude on the lower check down below if you're interested in those they're both drugstore and amazing so I will be right back here with my hair down and my lashes on all right lashes are on what I'm gonna do is quickly take a shade from the profusion in Infatuation palette. It's just kind of a really deep brown, almost black. I think it's a lot softer than black though, which is what we're kind of going for. I'm taking that on my Sigma Wing Liner EO6 and I'm just pressing that right over the band of the individual lashes just to add a little bit of depth and also cover up any of that clear glue. It just makes everything look a little cleaner basically. I'm not trying to go in and like do a winged liner or anything like that though. It's just to really hide the lash band. I'm also going to take that, look up, and apply that to the outer corner area under the lash line. I think that'll help kind of offset the watery eye situation. All right, and finally, I'm going to line my lips with the NYX lip liner in nude pink, and then I'm going to go in with the Milani Amour Satin Matte Lip Cream in 03 Fancy Raffine. I think that's how you say it. And I'm going to go ahead and just top that off with the glowing lip gloss from L'Oreal in See You Soon. All right, you guys, and this is the completed all drugstore Valentine's Day tutorial in natural light. I think it looks so pretty and it was so easy to achieve minus my very watery eyes. You can get everything at the drugstore where you will probably be picking up your Valentine's Day things and if you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, I'm sure you're going to be going to the drugstore for your snacks or prescriptions or, you know, just to peruse the makeup. That's why I go there. So I hope you found this video fun and somewhat educational. If you guys have any questions, as always, please let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. Definitely follow me on Instagram as well, where you will see more of that guy right there, along with his two cat brothers, Stanley and Theo. They are all over my Instagram stories, but I do keep my Instagram feed makeup related, and I always let you guys know on there when I post a new video. So thank you so much for watching once again. I love you all, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.